morning. It's good to see you on this lovely spring morning and a pleasure to welcome all of you to Sunday morning worship in Lawson Memorial. There's a special welcome to those visiting or returning after a break. We hope all of you enjoy worshiping with us and come back again soon. It's good to see the youngsters with us for the early part of the service. There's always a special welcome for you. Any young visitors are invited to go across to the hall with the other youngsters to join in the fun of Sunday school or to take in teen scene. And if you're under three, mum or dad can take you across to the hall to play in the crash at any time during the service and leave you in safe hands. Folks, we want everyone to know there's always a warm welcome into God's family here in the Lawson. So, as is our practice every Sunday, let's turn to those near us, especially those we don't know well, to share a greeting with a smile, a handshake, maybe even a hug, and pass on the good news, if you wish, signing, God loves you. God loves you. Loves you. <laughs> and we have a birthday in the family today. Yes, it's our chance to celebrate Chloe's birthday and see her blush as we sing to her Happy birthday. Now the intimations, as you know, we had a double header yesterday with Messy Church in the Sanctuary and the Church Guild Coffee Morning in the Hall. I'm told that Messy Church was, as always, great fun, thanks to Reverend Karen and the Messy Gang, and I've been asked by the Guild to say how much they appreciated all those who helped at and supported their coffee morning. You'll be pleased to hear they raised a grand total of 989 pounds. Well done. <laughs> this week we have all the usual meetings, Louse and Tots on Monday, Wednesday and Friday mornings, Men's Guild on Tuesday evening, Church Guild on Wednesday afternoon, but this week it's a Joint Guilds Project meeting two o'clock at East and Old, not here. On Thursday, we have Elevens' midweek worship, lunch club, craft group, but no men's prayer group in the evening. And on Friday evening, youth groups and drop zone, all at the usual times. As intimated last Sunday, we are all invited to attend a special service here on Thursday evening at seven o'clock, Looking forward to and celebrating the coming union of Albert Lemno Guthrie Riscobi, Dunichen Letham Kirk Den, Forfar St. Margaret's and Lawson Memorial into one congregation. This is also a great opportunity to meet up with old friends and new. As you know, our free breakfast club this year during the spring break is on weekdays, Monday to Friday, 9 to 11 o'clock, from 1st to 12th April. We're looking for volunteers willing to help cook or serve breakfast at any time over that fortnight. If you think you can do so, please contact Rona in the church office. Finally, as always, all of you are invited across to the hall after the service to enjoy a cuppy and a catch-up chat before you go home. Folks, it really is good to come together to worship God. Our intro to this morning's service is, Lord, 
I lift your name on high. Please stand to sing. weeks away from Easter. And Easter isn't just a good time to look back historically and look at the events of Jesus. And we will certainly be doing that. And Holy Week, we will have services every evening where we go along that journey of the Lord Jesus Christ in the last week of his life. But it's more than that. It's about looking at what Jesus did and what it means for us. It's about working out who we are because of Jesus. Or maybe I should put it this way, who we should be because of Jesus, because of what he's done, what the possibilities are, what is it that we need to do? And here's the wonderful thing. What is it that we need to do as we make the journey with him? Because he doesn't expect us to try and struggle on our own. He talks about being the light of the world. There are times when we hear Jesus saying, you still have the light with you. The wonderful thing is because of the resurrection of Jesus, we still have the light with us today. So we're going to praise God. We're going to stand and sing again. Light of the world, you step down into darkness.
So let's talk to God. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us. For you have put everything in place for us to get the very best of life. You have given us a wonderful world. You have given us one another, family, friends. You have given us resources that seemed to be endless. Forgive us that we have squandered everything. Forgive us that we don't love as deeply as we should. Forgive us that we don't show the compassion that we should. Forgive us for the times that we show indifference instead of reaching out and showing encouragement. Loving Lord, you are a great and mighty God and we recognize today that all of these things you have done for us. Help us to be good followers. Help us to be your family. Help us to worship you in mind, body and strength as you called us to do. And we ask that your spirit would be with us today as we come to worship, as we come to hear your word. We ask these things in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> For all of our youngsters who are here and those who watch at home, last week I was talking, it was Mother's Day, and I was talking about the mother of somebody who we've met in the Bible before, somebody called Moses. And, and I said to you that Moses had to learn how to trust God in the way that his mum had had to learn how to trust God as well. And that's because Moses was, might have been rescued and he might have been brought up in a palace, but Rose, Moses made his own mistakes. Moses murdered somebody and he had to get out of Egypt. And for a long time he lives in safety, he's away, way, 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 until... God says, right, I need you to go back. I need you to go and rescue your people. What? Why? Why? Like, I'm safe. Why would I even think about going back there? Are you kidding me? And it has to be said, if you read through, and it is a long passage, but if you read through it, Moses uses every excuse in the book. I'm not your man, Sorry, Lord, but I'm just not your man. I'm not the one to do that. I'm not even good at speaking publicly. I'm not your man. And it's amazing how God tends to be way ahead of us. And he says, well, that's okay. Take your brother. Uh, you know, what? And Moses goes back into Egypt and brings about amazing rescue with God's help. And I need to tell you, he really needed God's help. And I don't have the time this morning to do all of the story of Moses. At some point, we need to touch on that. But he really needed God's help to be able to bring all of these people who were being treated as slaves out of Egypt. But it doesn't kind of finish there because they've got to be, live as a kind of a nation now. They've got to work out how to get on together. They've got all kinds of things that is a pain for them. For example, there's snakes, and a lot of them are getting bitten by snakes. And God says something to Moses. He says, what to do? He said, I want you to make a bronze snake, a bronze snake, and wrap it around a pole, and I need you to lift it up. And you need to tell everybody to look at the pole with the snake on and they won't die from snake bite. They'll be okay. Now, I hope that he had strong arms because he was going to have to hold it up there a long time. But that's exactly what Moses does and the people survive. It's also why if you go to the chemist, you see that symbol now as the symbol of healing. It's because of Moses holding up the stick with the snake. Many, many, many years after Moses, and I'm talking about a long time, 
Jesus comes. And Jesus says something funny because he says, just as Moses lifted up the stick with the snake, so I'm going to be lifted up too on a cross. And the people are a little bit puzzled. That's a strange one. Just as Moses did a big rescue, Jesus also was going to be doing a big rescue, but it was going to be a different one. Well, hang on. What was Jesus rescuing us from? Because Moses, he was getting them out from being slaves, and also he was helping them to not die from snake bite. But we, every single one of us, have a tendency to have a disease, and I'm not talking about COVID, okay? And it's, it's because we, all of us, get infected by the power of evil. The old word was sin. I use it as the power of evil because you tend to think sin is just one little tiny thing that you've done wrong and that's it. But this is something that's there and it's always going to be there and it's going to touch all of us. And it's going to take more than a stick with a snake on it to help us. And what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying is that I will be the one who can cure you of that disease. I will be the one who not only can cure you of that disease, but stop you from catching it again. And I'm going to be lifted up, and I'm going to bring about a different kind of a rescue for you, but it's one whereby I will journey with you for the rest of your life to keep you protected. But here's the thing, that means that we've got to recognize that and, and make that journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. And the difference with this rescue is whereas Moses did a rescue and he had laws, 10 commandments, so God made an agreement and he made a, a covenant and it was a covenant that was based around these laws God makes a new covenant. It's the one that's based around love. It's an incredibly, incredibly powerful one. It's a, an incredibly, incredibly everlasting one. And, and here's the thing. It is what Easter is going to be all about. When we look into and dig into Easter, we're going to see just how powerful the love of God is. And the way that the love of God will get us through and hold us and keep us going forever. The problem with law was that you made a mistake. It was very, very difficult to find your way back. The good thing about love is that you make a mistake and God surrounds you with it. And he loves you enough to bring about that forgiveness and start you on the journey all over again. So Jesus talks about being lifted up and drawing us all to him when he's lifted up. And that's why we sing songs like we want to see Jesus lifted high. We don't mean we want to put him back on the cross again. What we mean is we want to remember that when we lift his name, when we lift him, and when we give him priority, he draws us to him and he helps us in all that we do. So we're going to sing that little song just now. We want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see Jesus We want to see Jesus 
that basket would move and walk. Little by little, take it back. And keep bread to my own weapon. Swap for the star. Double the down, 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 down. You want to see the news and the strength in the mind. By the mind, it's possible to find. And I want to see the truth of the world. We're going to turn to God's Word. It's from John's Gospel. John's Gospel is, is, is slightly different from the other three. Matthew, Mark, Luke, very much similar material in all of them. In fact, we always think that they, had, they probably had a copy of Mark when Matthew and Luke was written, and that's because nearly all word for word of Mark is contained in the other two. John's Gospel, a little bit different. The order of events, a little bit different. And often the way that John is explaining things is a little bit deeper. So we're going to read today, it'll be on the screen and in your order of service, and Linda's going to read it to us. Our reading this morning is from John chapter 12, verses 20 to 36. Some Greeks were among those who had gone to Jerusalem to worship during the festival. They went to Philip, he was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and the two of them went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has now come for the Son of Man to receive great glory. I am telling you the truth. A grain of wheat remains no more than a single grain, unless it is dropped into the ground and dies. If it does die, then it produces many grains. Those who love their own life will lose it. Those who hate their own life in this world will keep it for life eternal. Whoever wants to serve me must follow me so that my servant will be with me where I am. And my father will honor anyone who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me? But that is why I came, so that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice spoke from heaven, I have brought glory to it, and I will do it so again. The crowd standing there heard the voice, and some of them said, It was thunder, while others said, an angel spoke to him. But Jesus said to them, It was not for my sake that this voice spoke, but for yours. Now is the time for this world to be judged. Now the ruler of this world will be overthrown. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. In seeing this, he indicated the kind of death he was going to suffer. The crowd answered, our law tells us that the Messiah will live forever. How then can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus answered, The light will be among you a little longer. Continue on your way while you have the light, so that the darkness will not come upon you. 
for the one who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. Believe in the light, then, while you have it, so that you will be the people of the light. The word of God for the people of God. We continue with singing, Great God, you love, your love has called us here. Let us bow before the Lord once more as we bring before him our prayers for others. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we thank you for your great love and we thank you for your great faithfulness. For you continue to hold out your hope for our world. Lord, when many others would have walked away, still your desire is to show your love, your compassion, your comfort, your joy, your peace. Most of all, Lord, your forgiveness. And we recognize at the moment this is world is broken in so many ways. And today, Lord, we pray for those who live in Gaza. Not only are they struggling to get by as far as keeping away from bombs and destruction, but also struggling to find clean water and struggling to find food. Lord, this is your world. May we finally wake up and follow your ways. Lord, we pray too for the people of Israel 
who have known great hardship as a nation and as individuals. And we pray for those whose families are in captivity. And we pray for the hostages for their protection. Loving Lord, we pray for the people of Ukraine. As every year passes by, they must wonder what the future holds. Lord, we pray too for the people of Russia, who are also a people who live with uncertainty, a people who live in captivity. And so we ask, Lord, that your spirit would move. Father God, there are so, so many more. These are the things that we see on our new screens. But we pray for the nations this morning, for the hurt, for the poverty, for the oppression, for the hatred, for the unforgiveness, loving God, all of the things that are the exact opposite from those loving qualities that you bring into our world. And yet we know that your love has triumphed. And we ask that we would start to see that victory across the nations. We pray, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to hover over our own communities. We pray for our families our neighbours, our friends. We pray for each and every one that you would touch them. We pray too for those who maybe we don't get on so well with, that you would be able to bring that love and peace into our relationships. For those who struggle because of the loss of a loved one, Lord, that you would fill that emptiness and bring your comfort. And we take a few moments of silence right now as we bring before you those personal prayers for those that we care for. Lord, we thank you for your persistent love. We thank you for your strength. We thank you that you hold us and carry us when we are weak. We thank you for your permanent presence. And we make these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing again. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you.
I saw a, a joke on Facebook the other day. It had these two old men, and one was saying to the other, I've got a new hearing aid. And the other one said, really? What type? And the other guy says, half past two. <laughs> and I say this only because it, it struck me as I was reading through this passage that these two disciples come up to Jesus and they say, there's a couple of Greek fellows looking for you. And Jesus doesn't seem to answer the question. He starts going on about seeds and followers and, and all kinds of stuff. And I try to always put myself in the position of being there. And I'm trying to imagine the two disciples that have gone and said, Lord, there's a couple of fellas wanting to speak to you. And then he responds and they're going, what's he talking about? What do we go and say to the fellas? You know? And, and it's probably typical of John's writing because he wants us to get it and he packs it with information. And so it's good if we just take a little moment to kind of have a look at some of that information that Jesus is saying. Because what seems to happen is that when they go to Jesus and tell him about the Greeks, it's as if something clicks. Remember last week, Mother's Day, when we were talking about the mother of Jesus and Jesus saying to his mother, look, enough already, it's not my time. It's not my time. These events happened three years later. And just that little line, there's a couple of Greek folks looking for you. And it twigs with Jesus. It's my time. The time has now come. It's just unfortunate that these two fellows have no clue what he's talking about. But it's all fitting and it's all slotting into place. Jesus is recognizing it. It's coming towards the end of his earthly ministry. And the time has now come. And he tries, if you read through the Gospels, bless his heart, he tries always to prepare his disciples for what is about to happen. And they don't seem to get it. But fair dues to them, I probably wouldn't have done either. And he starts to say about seeds. When you plant the seed in the ground, it needs to die for the life to come from it, from those new shoots of life to come up. The seed itself needs to die. And he's trying to prepare, not just his own people, but the crowd for the events that are about to happen. He's trying to get them prepared for his own death because this needs to happen. And as you can imagine, that doesn't go down well. And interestingly, it doesn't go down well with the crowd. And that's because of their perception. It's always nice if you can come to something with a clean slate and not have all of the baggage, and I'm going to even say baggage of upbringing, and indoctrination that we all get as we grow and as we live and we grow up through life. There are a couple of stumbling blocks, at least for the Jewish people, to accept Jesus, to accept him as Messiah, to accept him as Son of God. One of those stumbling blocks, and you hear them saying, who is this Son of Man? One of those stumbling blocks is this whole issue of, and it's a big word, monotheism. There is one God, only one God. It starts, that's the very start of the Ten Commandments. I, the Lord thy God, am one God. One God. They are very, very twitchy about anything that says there's more than one. Remember that they are living under the occupation of a pagan nation, 
the Romans. The Romans worship all kinds of gods and their children. In fact, I need to tell you that one of the pictures that we see that looks like Mary with her child is actually the goddess Tamar with her child. And the, Greek, the Jewish people were used to seeing these kind, this kind of imagery and they were saying, well, wait a minute, how can there be father and son? There's only one. It's going to get worse when Jesus introduces Holy Spirit. Wait, 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 that's three. That's three. So there are all little stumbling blocks for the Jewish people to get their heads around along the way. And then on top of that, their scriptures tell them, the prophets tell them, that the Messiah will reign forever. So, hang on, the Messiah isn't meant to die. And if you are who we think you are, you've been doing all of these miracles, you've been teaching with authority, if you are who we think you are, how can you now be talking about dying? How can you now be talking about, you know, got to die for new shoots to come up? What, what, how does that even make sense? So it's good that we understand the confusion of the crowd. It's good too that we understand where do the Greeks fit into all of this? And we need to understand that the land that Jesus lived in, it wasn't just occupied by Romans. There were a lot of different nationalities that traveled through. Trade was a major thing. A lot of different nationalities. And sometimes the word Greek was used for somebody that was Greek speaking. There was a whole group of people that the Jewish people called the God-fearers. That's quite a good name, the God-fearers. We could write a, 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 a kid's series on that. But the God-fearers, they were people who would like to go to the temple. They weren't Jewish, though. They weren't Jewish converts. They were attracted by this God of the Jews. They wanted to know more. They were never, though, allowed past the court of the Gentiles. They were never really allowed in. But they were already being drawn by God. And now, they've heard Jesus. They'll have heard about him. Maybe they've been part of a crowd that's seen something. They'll have heard of his teaching. And now, they want to know more. For Jesus, this is just telling him what he always knew, that he had come for everyone. And that now was the time for the crowds, for the Gentiles to see him for who he is, but also to be part of what he is doing. And we must never, ever skip past the anguish that is there because that is real. All the way through the Gospels, you hear this thing about, now is not the time. My time's not yet come. Now is not the time. Now is not the time. And now it's arrived. And you can hear Jesus almost with a heavy-hearted sigh saying, after waiting all this time, I can't really say to God, I don't want to go through with this. It's what I came for. It's why I'm here. But we need to understand that this is really serious for Jesus. He's aware not just of the mockery, that's bad enough. He's aware not just of the betrayal, that's bad enough. But also of the sheer physical pain that he is going to have to go through. And I don't know about you, but I would actually probably, at that point, be putting all my stuff in a case. 
Thank God he didn't. He's aware of what is ahead and aware of what he needs to do. And it's a heavy-hearted anguish that none of us could easily come alongside and say, it's going to be okay. We will notice in the gospel some of the disciples try to do that because they just don't get it. And then he says these words about when I am high and lifted up, I will draw all the nations unto me. And he was indeed speaking about the way that he was going to die. And it's interesting that he would indeed draw a crowd. And it would be a mixed crowd of different nations. But if the Lord Jesus Christ hadn't been high and lifted up, we wouldn't be here today. And that's 2,000 years later. All of the different generations, all of the different nationalities. That's when these Greeks were really going to see him. That's when they were going to look him in the face and see who he really is. And the thing is, that's the invitation for everyone. Sometimes as followers of Jesus, and he keeps, on, he keeps on talking about them being followers, he mentions it there. Sometimes as followers of Jesus, we've got to take the time out and look him in the face. We need to do our part. Because he didn't just do all that and say, right, that's fine, you're all right now, and walk away. His spirit stayed. And it is not enough for us to just say, oh yeah, I know who Jesus is, and walk away. Because we've got to stay as well. Not at the foot of the cross, but close to the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to forge that relationship. We need to keep that closeness. Because that's how we forge our own identity based on his. It's a two-way street. Relationships always are. And you always tend to find that God seems to do most of the work, that the Lord Jesus Christ seems to do most of the work. But we need to step up to the mark and play our part and be the people that he wants us to be and receive the forgiveness that he wants us to receive and live the lives that not only does he want us to live but needs us to live. And remember to look him in the face and see him for who he is. The one who loves us more than anyone else and know that in him we have a future. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness from generation to generation. Forgive us when we make it all too complicated. Forgive us when we put things in the way or make up excuses. Forgive us when we put things on pause, or oh, it's not my time. And help us to recognize that the time for us to grow close to you is right now and will last forever. Amen. We're just going to take a moment as we take up our offering.
Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your many, many gifts, for your many, many blessings. Today we make our gifts to you, and we recognize that we make these gifts from the blessing that you have given us. Thank you, Lord. We ask that you would accept our gifts, that you would give us the wisdom as to how to use them to grow your kingdom. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Just to be reminded that we have this service of union on Thursday evening. Please come along. Uh, it'll be an interesting service. It's a presbytery service, so that means that I won't be taking the service. Members of presbytery will. Um, and it will also have, that the moderator will be here, um, and she's the one who, you know, there's like a, a formula that has to be read when congregations come into union. So all of that will be happening on Thursday night. And I also have to say that Chris and her team will be doing us a bun fight for afterwards as well. Okay. So if nothing else, come along for the bun fight after. You know, it will be good because we should be able to meet up with others that are coming in to our union. Um, we've got the place that's big enough to hold everybody for a service of union. And it'd be nice to, to get together ourselves, but also with everybody else too. So that is seven o'clock on Thursday evening here in the church. You're all welcome. We need to remember that um, Jesus spent his whole ministry bringing glory to God. That's what, that was his desire, to point people to God and to bring glory to God. And as he does it, you hear the voice of God himself saying, yeah, you've given me glory and we'll do it again. It's only appropriate as we close this morning that we give glory to God and we stand and sing together, glory be to God the Father. So now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you evermore. Amen.